evening and welcome to the September 18th uh, meeting of the Committee to Whole. Uh, we have one item on the agenda, Communities and Schools of Greater King County update. We're going to kick it off with Christy Rowland. Christy. Thank you, Council President Pro Tem Prince. Uh, Christy Rowland, your Deputy CAO and Administrator of the Executive Services Department. I'm pleased to be introducing Jamie Green, the Executive Director of Communities and Schools, and she'll tell you a lot more about that program. I wanted just to start with a little context. The city has been in contract with Communities and Schools since 2000. So we have quite a long history with them and working with directly with kids and their families of the Renton School District. We provide $25,000 a year. We provide in-kind services such as print and mail and technology. It's a three-way agreement with the Renton School District and they provide the same. So we're on par in parity with the Renton School District who also provides $25,000 plus some in-kind services. <clears throat> For this, they operate or they employ liaisons and other staff that work directly with kids and families. And they also support community um, volunteerism, such as the annual block party, which you may have heard about, that provides student needs ahead of the school year. So with that, I'll let the uh, Jamie Green take it over and let you know what we've been up to. Thanks, Christy. Um, so I'm just going to do a real quick high-level overview of um, our formation uh, 28 years ago. And I was telling Christy, I'm going to try to do it without my glasses, but I don't think I can, so I'm going to on and off. I was like, this is my last year I can do it without glasses. It happened last year. <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned, 28 years ago, we were, we were formed through um, a partnership between the City of Renton and the Renton School District. And so over the, these last 28 years, we've gone through four stages of, our, um, of, uh, of growth within our organization. So back in 1994, when we were formed, um, we began our formation and we were clarifying our purpose. And we started supporting one um, school, Nelson Middle School. And then the next stage of growth in 1997, we... Um, through strategic planning and through um, standardizing our operation procedures, we um, had some growth there. So we added seven schools. So we were in a total of eight schools. And then the next stage of growth is um, we began maturing. And we did that through operational effectiveness. And then the st these last six years are really where... Um, the um our, our our most growth has been we um we are building the next generation of our organization through transformation so um as you some of you might be like well i thought you were communities and schools of renton well now we are communities and schools of king county and i or greater king county and i'll talk a little bit about that um so yeah um i i do want to mention that um the, the main reason for our name change to Greater King County is in 2023, so just a few months ago, we uh, merged with CIS of Seattle. Um, so people are like, oh, you're in Seattle now, like you're, you have such a big footprint. Seattle is only four schools that, we, that we've added. So um, yes, we've grown, but it's just an, an additional um, four schools that we've added with, our, um, with that merger. Um, this year, we are adding our fifth school district. So we are expanding into the Issaquah School District. So we are in Renton, Tukwila, Seattle, Lake Washington, and now Issaquah School District. And we will be supporting 37 schools. And um, we have gone from 28 years ago of a budget of 68,000. Our budget this year is 2.25 million. So what I really want to focus on for uh, a brief minute is our, our biggest growth has been within the last six years. So we have gone from a budget of 700,000 to now um, 2.1 million. Well, last, last fiscal year ended with 2.1 million. We've gone from 12 to um, 38 schools. We are, um, we did lose one school. That's why we're in 37 this year. Um, we went from case managing, so pro providing one-on-one -on -one support to students, 
from 431 students to 933. And we've gone from supporting eight, about 8,000 schools, whole school support to um, just under 14,000. So these last six years has been quite a lot, but really, really good stuff that's been happening. Um, some of you have heard, may have heard that in February of 2022, we received a large transformational gift from McKinsey Scott. She did her her and her team did their own research on certain communities and schools across the um the country and we had no idea this gift was coming i actually ignored about five emails and phone calls because it sounded like oh i have a major donor who wants to give you a large gift i'm like i get those all the time um so but thankfully, I actually returned the call and we found out that we were one of the, the selected affiliates. Um, so we were given 800,000 unrestricted, a one-time gift. So after a lot of conversations at the board level and what are we gonna do with this? Are we gonna expand into more schools? What are we gonna do? I put together a comprehensive proposal that I wanted to invest in our staff. Um, nonprofits are, asked to do a lot with a little and that usually comes with cuts with um with salaries and so um did a proposal we had our board didn't take a lot a lot of time to convince them they're like yep we should do that so we increased site coordinator salaries 40 percent so bringing the average salary to fifty-seven thousand, and that still might not sound a lot but if they worked full full year, that is equivalent to 75,000, which is what that's what they say that you should the, the minimum you should make in King County to be able to live in in King County. So I'm um, really proud about that. Um, so with that, um, the McKinsey Scott donation will last about four years because we are using about 62% annually coming from that donation and the other 38% we are um, just increasing our fundraising. Um, we also increased our retirement contribution from 3 to 10%, regardless um, of how much or if any staff contribute. So pretty proud about that as well. Um, and since we've made these changes, we have had no staff turnover. So. I also want to touch base um, uh, briefly on what led, uh, led, the, led the board to say, absolutely, we should, we should do this, is the board has shifted to purpose-driven board leadership, um, which is these, I know you have it in front of you, but these these four areas that are interrelated, um, that we are always t thinking about our purpose before the organization. And I'll give you an example. When we were in conversation about merging with Seattle, there was a lot of conversation like, what's in it for us, like our organization? Um, what's in it for Rent and Tequila? Because that was our name at the time. and we had to bring the conversation up to what's best for our purpose, which is striving for educational equity and um, making the most impact on students. And so um, that, that, that's really what, what drove those conversations. Also, we wanna have respect for the ecosystem. So we, we wanna, anytime we make a decision, we're always thinking about the other players it, that are supporting students the other organizations that are um, supporting Renton, Taquilla, all the different school districts that we're in, and always having an equity mindset. So making sure that we're, um, we're advancing equitable outcomes and that our strategies aren't reinforcing systemic inequalities, which our pay for our staff before we made that increase was kind of um, reinforcing systemic inequities. And then lastly, we always want to have authorized voice and power. Our work naturally has that because we s support students and their families and they have the largest voice in what supports we provide them because they tell us what barriers they're facing or what their goals are. And then we help them to achieve what they want. So that's kind of already built in, but we just make sure that we always have that authorized voice and power. And so now I just want to dial in specifically to the Renton um, School District support. So uh, 28 years ago, when, our, when we were formed, it was the, the board's goal to be in every single school in the school district. Slowly, slowly over the years, we are now there. We are supporting, while we don't have a full-time liaison in every single school, we are supporting every school um, in the Renton School District. And um, about 
No, we're going on our fifth year. We, um, we're we specializing in, in some areas that the school district came to us for and said, we need some more support. We know that you can reach families, you support families and students so well. How can you help us um, support the unaccompanied high school minors? So we have a mobile position that goes through all um, around all four Renton schools and supports that population of students. We also are doing some middle school, college and career um, readiness. So getting them ready for the high school and beyond planning. The school district realized that that was a little bit of a gap going from middle school and then just going right into, let's start planning post high school. Um, so we have one person who goes between all four middle schools. And then we're going on our third year. Um, again, the school district, they. They kind of kind of a reputation that if they give bring me an idea, I'm like, yes, let's talk about it. Let's see how we can make it work. So another uh, three years ago uh, was the re most recent idea of how we can support the sev seven elementary schools that don't have a designated liaison. Um, and so we have um, another mobile position that floats between those seven elementary schools. They're not quite as high of a need as the other elementary schools, but they do have um, families that need support. So. We are very proud of that successful position. And um, I know that you should have in your packet the, our full annual report, but I wanted to dial in and share with you the um, Renton School District specific outcomes for last year. So again, we were in all 23 schools and we were able to support about 7,500 students through whole like tier one um, support. So that could be um, weekend food bags, that could be um, um, other basic needs, it could be um, attendance initiatives so, or school climate if, if we want to, you know, better the, uh, the school cl climate as a whole. There's a whole bunch of different initiatives based on what the school's needs are. And then we were able to uh, case manage 454 students across those, those 23 schools. And as you can see, the outcomes, um, that's pretty much what our, our outcomes are pretty much every year is, um, you know, between 80 and to an um, high 90% of, of the students we support that have those um, individual goals. Each student that we support has a, either an attendance behavior, coursework, or social and emotional goal. Um, sometimes they have more than one of those goals, but they have at least one of those goals that they're trying to um, achieve. And so now I want to just highlight our annual back to school block party. Some of you have may have heard of it. Maybe you drove by and you saw it. We were, this was, um, I think we would have had even more families. It was very successful, but this was when 405 was closed and the smoke was really bad. We probably maybe shouldn't have been outside, um, but it, it was still extremely successful. This was our fifth annual event. Um, so we brought this on in 2019 after I came back from a conference and I was like, a block party, we should do that. Um, so we did it. And um, then in 2020 with COVID, we did a drive-through event. So we can, we can say that this is the fifth annual. It's just looked a little different for one year. And so we were able to provide over 1,000 back um, 800 school supply kits. So we get uh, all kinds of donations from the community. Um, thankfully, this year we had um, Pack Car. They no T-Mobile. T-Mobile came and packed all of the school supply kits because last year it was me by myself because the other development person um, was very very pregnant and she couldn't really move very quickly. So I was so thankful to T-Mobile this year. Um, 1,200 pairs of socks, 90 pairs of shoes, 30 haircuts, and 230 helmets. So, very successful event. And so now, I just really briefly want to talk about the three um, areas of focus that the board has set over that we want to focus on over the next year, probably two years, is really deepening our impact. So that doesn't necessarily mean expansion; it means deepening. So that we want to increase the number of case managed students. It doesn't mean more schools. It just maybe maybe we add second site coordinators at some of the schools that have a large population. We're still working on that. Um, we want to really focus on more on staff development, so making sure that we're creating a culture of learning and growing and that staff feel extremely valued. They're, they're, they're the most important um, people in our organization doing this work. 
And then the third one is increasing the number of partnerships. Um, and that part, our partners report feeling more connected to us. Um, so those are the, the three areas of focus. Along with that, we are hiring a senior level of um, development, a director of development. Right now, it's it's we have one director of development and myself. And um, I do all the grant writing. And I just need a little bit of a break from grant writing. And so we're going to bring on a person who's going to really focus on individual giving and um, helping me write those grants. Um, and then we're figuring out our annual event. So I don't know if it would be a question at the end, but like what happened to your event? We It was, it was um, a dinner before I came on and then we switched it to a breakfast. Then COVID hit, we did an online one and we haven't brought it back yet because we're trying to really decide what that's going to look like. Um, so stay tuned and you guys will all be invited whenever we figure that out when we get our new senior director of development on board. And so I just want to thank you so much for your partnership. As Christy mentioned, um, you guys have been supporting us for quite some time. Um, if it wasn't for the city and the school district, we would not be here because they're the ones who got together and realized that there were um, students and families that needed more support and then found um, communities and schools. Back then it had a different name. Um, I also want to thank you for the waiver of the Liberty Park um, fee for the, the, the block party. We want to continue to have it at um, Liberty Park. Um, now that we're not in the Liberty Park building, we were like, well, how are we going to, where are we going to store stuff? I just feel very um, passionate about having her signature event at the same place every year so that families can count on it. It's always the same weekend in August as well. So that being said, Tom allowed us access to the building the week of, and um, I should have actually, darn, I should have put a pictures on there. We had, we, we could only use um, the lobby area because they were doing programming. He let us stock boxes all the way up to the ceiling. I was on a chair getting it all the way up. It worked out beautifully. And so I just want to thank Tom for that. And I got to give a shout out to Ben and Carl. I want it on record that they are amazing. And um, we, we try not to overprint, but sometimes we have a little big order when we have an event and they're just, they're so great. We love them so much. And then of course, last but not least, you all for um, continuing to support our organization through your strong in-kind donations. If it wasn't for the printing and the IT support, um, it, it, you know, things, things would be hard because we would have to have, to have that come out of, out, out of our $2.25 million budget, which is already a pretty big budget to, to raise all those funds. So thank you so much. Um, and I also just want to highlight some other city partners. So um, the Renton Police, so I, I, they do our holiday shop with a cop and they uh, our coat drive. So we, those are the only coats that we now get is through them. And so, so thankful for that. Our families, I mean, they go out the door as soon as we get them in. Like we can't, we, we, we never have enough, but we're so thankful for that. And then um, the Renton Regional Fire, um, I know that's not, Renton, and anyway, you, they still support Renton, but um, with the holiday ad, ad, adopt a family that they, um, the families, they, they love it. Um, you know, Santa pulling up on the fire truck. It's just, it's, it's an amazing um, experience for the families. So thank you so much. Thank you, <clears throat> Jamie. Have any questions? Any questions from council? Council member Rivera. Thank you, uh, Council Pro Tem. Um, Prince, I appreciate that. I Now, I know you said you were in 23 schools, and just for clarification, um, for anyone who's watching online, on slide eight of the presentation, I didn't see Tally or Hazen listed as the high schools, and I'm assuming you are in those schools. They just weren't listed on the Thank you. That, slide. That, that was um, an error, yes. So that's our um, the unaccompanied minor um, oh, position okay. supports Tally. So. Oh, and, and Hazen as well, or is Hazen? Hazen as well, yep. Thank you for that. May I ask a follow-up? And let's make a follow-up question. Yep. Councilmember Alberson, and I'll come back to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, just for clarification of uh, some of the stats here on the, um, you know, I'm looking at just the graph page, but if you look at the presentation, I guess it's where all the uh, all the the pretty graphics are and that sort of thing. Um, well, I guess there's a lot of pretty graphics. Hold on one second. It is page nine um the 82 percent 88 percent the improved attendance improved behavior um 
when I saw the little notation that says the percentage reflects students with that goal, that kind of threw me off on what that percent actually represented. It seems like, oh, 82% had improved attendance. But when I read that, yeah. it, it it seems to say, well, 82% say, hey, I want to improve my attendance, which is hard for a student, I would believe a student to say, but. Uh, thank you for that. So f when I first got here, um, we didn't have that little asterisk. And so what it was looking like is that 80, like let's, let's use um, attendance, for example. Before that asterisk, it would, it, I was reading as 82% of the 454 case managed student improved their attendance. Right. What this means is that not all 454 students had an attendance goal. For I think this one had like 225 of those students had an attendance goal. And of that, I'm just throwing this out there, but I don't quote me, but of that 225, 82% improved. Okay. So and so they give you their goals of what they are. Is that sort of, opinion? yeah, we sit down and we do um, a student needs assessment. So we just talk about like, what, what's going on? Like, <laughs> let, and we have guiding questions, but we really try to find out what's going on outside of school, inside of school. And then based on the information that they're telling us or what their teachers are telling us, like they're not coming to school enough. We kind of have a sense, okay, we're probably going to have an attendance goal, but we really want to hear from the student. Like, do you want to improve your attendance? If they say no, we're not going to put in a plan to improve their attendance. But if they say, yeah, I want to improve my attendance, then we put in um, like steps to help them get achieve that goal. Okay. Makes sense. Perfect. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'll turn over there. Thank you. And thank you for asking that question because that was going to be one of my follow ups. So oh, I appreciate that, Councilmember Alberson. I'm here to, um, help. to follow up on, um, may I ask why is why is the um, a different uh, an unaccompanied high school minor or, or a coordinator in Hayes and in Tally, and you have it seems like a different in Limburg and Renton. How was, how did that decision come to to fruition? So that mobile position actually supports all four schools, even though in Lindbergh and Renton, they have a, designate, a designated liaison who supports the entire student population. This person just focuses on the unaccompanied minors, and it was identified through the school district saying that all, all the schools have a, uh, un, um, um, unaccompanied minors, and so they kind of split their time between those four buildings. Thank you so much for that clarification. I'm sorry, Vaughn. Just at the page. Thank you. Uh, so page nine, going back to the 38% of uh, English learners, I was just wondering if you have more of a breakdown of the languages or of the background. Just curious. I, I can send that to you. We, we do break it down through that. Okay, thanks. Any other questions from council? Council Member Perez. Thank you very much uh, for your great presentation. I think that the works that you do is it's absolutely beautiful. I have always been very impressed and I had the chance to meet in the past uh, students that have graduated and, and, and the relationship that they kept with some of their mentors through the years and it has been incredible. Um, I, I feel, I really believe that, that it has grown and the potential of this program has helped so many, many students over the years and I think it's beautiful, the, the work that you guys do. do. Um, in the past, I remember that you guys were struggling with mentors. Uh, what is the situation these days uh, with that? So the pandemic really hurt an already declining um, mentor program. So we were already coming up with strategies and how to increase engagement and how to increase our mentors. Because when I first started, I met with um, Superintendent Pat Nod and he's like, we need 400 mentors. And at that time we had about a hundred and I was like, okay. Um, so we were already really focusing on how we're going to increase our mentors. And the pandemic hit, couldn't um, support students in, the, you know, in school. We were doing virtual supports. At first it was okay, but then the, the students just got so burnt out of being online. So then when we, the buildings opened back up, we couldn't immediately bring in mentors. It took a little while. And then when they're like, okay, you can bring them back in. The mentors are like, it, a handful of them returned because they just, for whatever reason, they didn't feel comfortable. It had been too, time had passed. So we, what we're doing now is we're really trying to partner with uh, mentor specific organizations that they got it down in terms of how, 
um, mentoring, I mean, um, recruiting mentors and mentoring the mentors, and we're um, helping to bring them into the school district and um, supporting those students. So our focus is actually, we're not focusing on mentors, um, but we have not given up on, the men on mentors per se, we're partnering with other organizations. So when, when that information went to the school district, they were happy that we weren't just stepping back, that we were really trying to better support the students by working with organizations that just focus on mentors. I have a follow up. I just wanted to clarify if I understand it. So right now we don't have mentors in the school, but we're you're working with the school district to bring an organization that eventually will bring back the mentors, but not through you guys, but through another organization. So we don't have mentors in the schools, but there are mentors in the schools right now through other organizations. Oh, they are mentors in mm -hmm. the schools. Okay, but not through the communities in the schools. Correct. That's okay. Now I understand it better. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Any other questions from council? Councilmember McIrvin. It looked like you raised your hand. Oh, no, I apologize. <laughs> Itchy face. <laughs> Councilmember Rivera. Thank you, uh, Pro Tem Prince, or Council Pro Tem Prince. I appreciate that. Um, an additional clarification on um, slide nine. These numbers are incredible. Is there any way that you can speak to some of the tactics that your case manager they're doing to achieve such incredible outcomes? And like, tell us your secrets, please. Um, the secrets is all through relationships. So the founder of Communities and Schools um, said that uh, programs don't ch change students, relationships do. So that's our secret sauce, is our um, site coordinators are reflective of the students that they support and they're a trusted body in the school. So they can find out things that maybe teachers can't find out or don't have the time to find out. And then it's really listening to the student, like, what do you want? What do you, what, what will help you get to school? What will help your behavior? What will help your um, social emotional growth? Um, and it's really, it's, it's the students identifying it. And then if, for example, if it's food, then we, we, we help them with that. But we really don't have secret other than the relationships that our site coordinators have. Like I mentioned earlier, like they're, they're the star of the show. They're the ones who keep this organization running and um, they're the ones who are so incredibly valued. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, once again, um, I really want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the numbers that I have, I'm seeing here is, are very impressive, especially I'm going to tag along in the 38 English language, language learners that you're helping. That's a very high number. Of students, um, uh, English language le learners need a lot of a lot of help. Uh, especially, I, I'm assuming that most of these students are in elementary. But I would love to see if you have any breakdown of the students that are um, English language learners in high school, because that's very challenging. You're asking that know. Renton High School, the site coordinator there, that's that's all she works with is um, Spanish speaking. It's primarily Spanish speaking. She's Spanish speaking herself. Um, and so that that has been an, a student population that has been identified that needs support on help them with their post high school planning. And so she is truly incredible at, at that support. So I could give you a breakdown of high school specific just at the top of my head, Renton her entire caseload is Spanish speaking. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this. And again, I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing for them. Well, thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you for coming and talking to the council. We appreciate it. Uh, the committee at whole is adjourned and we will reconvene as a full council at seven o'clock. Thank you. Thank you.